Welcome to The B Word, the podcast for women who want to unlock the clarity needed to put your big girl panties on and rock your real estate career like the true boss you are. I'm Joanne Bolt, your host, and together we'll dive into the things your broker doesn't teach you in order to own your own truth, disown the things getting in your way to finding your place, and stop apologizing for the obstacles you have to overcome along the way. All right, everybody, welcome back to the B Word. Thanks for joining in. Today's episode is super near and dear to my heart because it is the first time we've ever had a guy as a guest. So feel special, Vlad, because you are the one and only so far. What? Thank you. Well, thank you for your trust, <laughs> Joanne. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Absolutely. This is, this is really cool. You guys, Vlad is my sponsor here at EXP Realty. He has become a very near and dear friend, um, a, a mentor to me, someone I reach out to on a regular basis to get his thoughts and opinions on the industry in general. Quite frankly, because of the experience he's had and the openness and willingness he has to share with with those that need it, want it, and are, you know, ready, willing, and able to listen. So, Vlad, let me let you start it off just a little bit, and let's give everyone a little bit of your background, if you can. Sure. Uh, glad. First of all, Joanne, really glad to be here, and, th and thank you for, for having me as the as a guest on this podcast, because I know how much how much this conversation, uh, like, me, just means to you, just based on, you know, our business relationship so far and just how big of a giver you are and this is this is Thanks. totally in line with with like who you are as a human being so i'm just honored to be here and have this conversation with you and with all your listeners and fans um let's see i i, I say that you know when it comes to real estate yeah uh, where i've been now for almost 20 years i probably have done every every single role that one can do on the residential real estate side from being a solo agent to building a small yet powerful team uh, in here in Baltimore, but we specialize in short sales and, and distressed transactions to starting the first KW brokerage outside of uh, Baltimore, my neck of the woods, and uh, becoming its uh, CEO under Keller Williams umbrella, then starting a second one, and then being a part of uh, being a part owner of a third. And then I, I was also uh, a CEO of a, uh, a large expansion network um called five doors and i was a part owner of that as well um and the reason i share that is because like w w when i look at just the real estate industry it, it kind of gives me a a different lens to look through because i've been on i've been in leadership in the brokerage i've been in leadership in large sales organization i've been an agent who's been led either well or not well I've been a leader <laughs> slash manager of a smaller organization. So, so, you know, and I've seen real estate professionals come and go, right? Thousands and thousands of them. And I, you know, I've been, I've been able to really learn from them and what it takes to not only succeed, but also what it takes to fail. Ooh, that's a good one. Dive into that a little well, bit. Look, it's a, I'm a, I'm a observer of patterns, right? And, um, you know, it, real estate industry and, and look, you know this and I'm sure that all of you know, most of your listeners know this is a really simple industry. Yeah, I, I like to say it's so simple. It's yeah. hard. Like, it, like that's perfect. Perfect. And I know that the person is very likely to fail if they complicate things. So what does that look like for a real estate professional? Well, I, uh, this is a part of complication and I hope it, you know, doesn't rub anybody the wrong way. If you do, it's all my thoughts, not Joanne's. Hey, they're listening to a podcast called the B uh, word. Fair enough, fair enough. There so, you go. Um, you know, if, if a real estate, if a newer real estate professional, um, complicate, here's one of the ways that they complicate it. I want to learn everything there is to learn about real estate before I work with one client. Mm -hmm. So they get caught in that getting ready to get ready to get ready hamster it's wheel. A, and it's, it, look, the industry, the, the transaction process, the client process, like that can be somewhat complex, right? But 
if you want to, it's, it's kind of like, like, you know, before I, before I learn arithmetic, I want to know everything about calculus. Mm. No, like start out with the thing that you need right now, which is go talk to as many people in your life already about real estate. And maybe it'll turn into client appointments and maybe it won't. But this complex or attempting to unravel complexity of an entire real estate transaction, something that for you and me took 20 years, they want to learn in two months and they want to learn it in a classroom. It's, it just doesn't just doesn't work. So like when it comes to failure, I and this may sound off, but I told people like, these are the only things that you need to know right now. Everything else is going to probably scare you because you're going to learn Great. how much stuff you actually don't know. But look, in this industry, if you know how to secure a client, if you know how to talk about uh, real estate with potential buyers and sellers, which, by the way, everybody is a potential buyer and seller. <laughs> right. Everybody is right. The only question is when uh, they'll want to buy or sell. If that's the thing that you do first for three, six months, everything else will fall into place. So I watch patterns of what's going to take people to succeed in the industry and then also like fail. So if I see somebody show up to every class, but they're not showing up to let's say lead gen time or don't have any pendings or don't have any listings, I'm like, hmm, they're, they're going to be a student forever and not going to be an action taker. <laughs> All right, so let me ask you, because, I mean, our show is geared toward the women, but from the guy's perspective as running a huge expansion team, which if you're newer to the industry and you don't realize, an expansion group has teams at multiple locations, um, either across your state, your county, or across the country. And so, Vlad, you ran this expansion group, Five Doors, you were also a team leader in a Keller, multiple Keller Williams offices. So I know you had the opportunity to sit down one-on-one -on -one coach and mentor agents. Did you see a pattern ever that you can think of between the men and the women, things that got in our way as women that you consistently saw and had to kind of like walk us through? Or did you really just not ever notice any difference? Um, because at the end of the day, we all have the same problems. You know, I, I, Joanne, look, I wish I could. I know that's a hard one to answer, I, and, right? And look, I, you know, we're friends and I'm assuming that everybody's listening. We're also friends. Now. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I wish I could say that there were no differences. Right. But there are. Right. And there, I think that there, the way that I would kind of answer this, uh, Joanne, is there, there is the, there is the personal differences. And, every, and by the way, mm -hmm. just like with with men, there are different types of men, if you will. Right. So there are differences. Mm -hmm. Like I would expect that the differences are based on different personal personalities rather than, let's say, sex. Right. And okay. then there would be like real estate industry differences, the way people approach them. But that, I believe that that's also not sex related. Right. I would okay. say that Fair the enough. biggest difference that I saw is societal pressure type of difference. And, and here's what I mean by that. Um, it, 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 it's very, uh, it was very uncommon to talk to, it's a coach or train men and them having a concern of how do I take care of my kids while I'm growing this business? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a big right? one. Whereas, um, the conversation about kids came up a lot with, um, well, both married and single women, right? Because okay. societal pressure, if you will, is women take care of the kids. And I know, I mean, I, like, I know I'm preaching to the choir here because you're, you know, you, you built a massive business while your kids were fairly little, right? And yeah, uh, growing up, I know that they're what, teenagers now, right? And 11 yeah. and 13. And thank God they can actually make themselves a it's, sandwich it's, now. They're, they're teenagers. They've been a teenager, I would imagine, for both of them, even though the oldest just is probably for about three years. That's. Oh, I would say the 11 year old's more of a teenager than yeah. the 13 year old because she's my girl. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a. I'm sure we'll get into it. I have three girls and uh, the. 
the oldest is 12, but she's been a teenager for a while. Yeah, yeah, you're hitting yes. it too. And um, the, that societal pressure is kind of like, it's something that men don't have to, at least by, in my experience, don't have to, don't talk about as much is and don't have maybe even deal with it as much okay and i think mm -hmm. that that's been probably one of the biggest differences in conversation between men and women and the the thing that that always surprised me joanne is that like women the i don't even know how to say it it's like women had to it, it's not even balance, but it's kind of like they had to become they, they they were talking about becoming somebody that they were not. So it's like Ooh. the the question that I would have is, are you a mom first or are you a realtor first? Oh, and the fact that the women sometimes have to actually answer that question is something that no broker ever talks about and no broker ever helps you figure out. Yeah. And it's, uh, and it's like, so it, it it's, they, it, people said that they were a mom first, but they were behaving like they were realtor first. Mm. And, and I'm like, look, if you're a mom first, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with the other way around. Like, right. I'm not here to <clears throat> like, I'm not here to say that somebody should be mom first and realtor second. No, like I'm, like everybody, it's everybody has their own lives. You guys figure it out, right? But it's like if one is a mom first and a realtor second, then build your business around that. Amen. And, and it's, it's okay it's, to not have, you know, if you're mom first, it's okay to put parameters around when you're going to answer the phone and go on showings and maybe you're maybe you don't want as many transactions as the woman who's the realtor first and that's okay. And vice versa. Totally. It's okay if you're realtor first and you want more transactions and you've got the energy and the time and the ability to do that. It's okay. And we shouldn't feel embarrassed by that or shamed by whatever decision we make. No, absolutely not. And I think that that's what it comes down to is like this, this shaming that I think it's, it may not be like, oh, you should do this. Somebody is pointing a finger at you. It's more like in the background, mm. right? It's more from TV. It's more from like whatever, like how people were brought up. And it's like, this is the way it should be. This is the way it should be. This is the way it should be. And then we kind of carry it with you. Like, look, I, I, I know women that made a conscious choice that I'm a businesswoman, quote unquote, first, okay? And that means I'm going to set my kids up. It, my kids are not going to suffer because of that. But what that means is I have two kick butt nannies that like that take care of my kid in such a way. Or I have in-laws that live right next to me. Or I'm going to move into a house with my in-laws. Or I'm going to move into a place with my parents where my, you know, a different generation is taking care of my young one while I'm out there building a financial future for them, right? But it's all a conscious type of a conversation where these types of decisions are not made based because of like, oh, something I heard on TV the other day or the way that I was brought up because my mom did this or my dad did that. It's kind of like, no, like this is my choice. Mm -hmm. And so going back to your original question is like this difference. I think that I spent more time with women unraveling how do I say it, Joy? Like unraveling like their beliefs, if you will, that were not their limiting beliefs and stuff and that shaming component that nobody, even though nobody was pointing a finger at them, they felt like there was a finger pointed at them and somebody was telling them the way that they should behave. And I'm like, look, it's your life. And these are your kids. Well, I think a lot of women also need to be given the permission that in different seasons of our lives, we will hold more higher. You know, when my, when my little ones were tiny, I was mom first, realtor second. And the more independent they got and the more I was able to do, I, I slowly shifted into realtor first, mom second. And everyone needs to know that ebbing and flowing is, is okay in those seasons of your career and your business. And you could have six ebbs and flows in one year, or you could ebb and flow each year. And, it, and it's okay. Totally. It's, 
And the reason it's okay is because it's your life. Right. Like when you when you when you stop and look at it, it's like this is my life. It's the only one I got. So let me live it the way that I believe it should be lived, not because of somebody else tells me. And you're absolutely right. Like none of this is written in stone. You can ebb and flow. That's perfect. I mean, look, my, like my experience with, with Krista, with my wife is, is very similar to that. Like when we had our first kid, you know, almost 13 years ago now, and my wife, she was one of the most sought out uh, special ed uh, teachers in, um, in, in, in Baltimore. Cool. Okay. Like that's her, that was her professional passion. It's autistic kids. And the the lower functioning kind of like the like the I don't want to say the better, but it's like where she excelled. And it's uh, and when we had our first kid, because my wife is that is a type of person that she like when she goes on to something, she goes like all in. That's why she was like one of the best and highly <laughs> sought out. And when we had Sloney, she was she was confronted with a choice. Do I want to be the best? special ed, autistic kid, like, you know, autistic teacher, specialist, or do I want to be the best mom? Because like for her, like she can't do, okay, or doesn't choose to, she probably could, but she wants to be like the best. And like, I remember, like we sat down and we had a bunch of conversations and, and she chose, like it was a choice. She chose being a mom. Does that make sense? Yeah, but absolutely. And she involved me in the conversation. I know she like she got advice from others how, how it would affect kids and all of that stuff. But that was her choice. And then I was on board with that choice. So we made like we 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 shifted our lives to accommodate to, uh, in a way to support exactly. Well, and thankfully for her, she had a spouse like you that that you could make that decision together, and you were supportive and willing to shift lives. You didn't just look at her and say, okay, figure it out. You know, um, you yeah. guys work very well in tandem together as a partnership on how this is going to look. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, um, I think that that may bring me to another point that, you know, some of the stuff that used to come up is, um, you, you're absolutely right. That like, I look at, at my marriage as a partnership. And I like I understand that. And I what used to also come up is that um, and I remember one this one conversation in particular with this young lady who had two boys, has two boys. And uh, her husband was was just not is a good husband, I'm sure. And uh, just was kind of like, OK, this is your side business or this is mm -hmm. your business. Like as long as child care doesn't fall back on my plate, I'm good. So do whatever you want as long as you are taking care of the kids. So like it, it, the reason I'm bringing it up is because the I think that our professional lives are very, can sometimes be determined by oftentimes be determined by our personal. Like, 100%. Yeah, I right? agree with you 100% yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah, that would be another thing is like yeah, like can you, you know, I would ask questions like can your spouse support or can you like husband to pick up the kids and be like, nope. They're like, okay. So you're kind of acting on your own in this area. And that becomes really, be, typically becomes tougher for people. Yep. All right. So, so I'm going to, let me loop around. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of call you on the carpet just a little bit here, if you don't mind. But when I first got this concept in my head of running a podcast and a company geared toward women in real estate. I, I did go to you first and said, you know, what do you think of this? Am I crazy to think that the girls need that space to have the conversations that aren't happening in our brokerages? And what impressed me the most was that you said to me, Joanne, I've got three girls and I look at things different now and I applaud what you're doing because you're paving the way for my girls to have a better experience if they want to go into real estate. Can you dive into a little bit about like what you meant by that? Yeah, sure. So, you know, up until I would say a few years ago, Joanne, I, you know, I was living my life uh, pretending that 
everybody looks at the world the way that I look at the world. We all think um, that that's the case, right? Right. <laughs> Mine was pretty extreme, I would say. And, and you know, people that know me, like, know I'm a good dude. Like, I'm, you know, a good dude. You know, with having three girls, I probably became even better dude. <laughs> because, like, I'm, I'm just a lot more sensitive than I even was back back in the day. But um, the the thing that kind of stood out for me is that I had an eye-opening experience that not everybody is treated the way that I would treat them. Mm-hmm. So, see, I, I went through life... I am going through life like I, I don't care whether, you know, you're ma- male or female or or whatever or whatever. Yeah. Right. Like it, it, it to me, like uh, I go through life and I've been going through life ever since I can remember it with a concept of meritocracy. Right. It's the you know. It's 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 up to you. That I mean, it's why reason that like I love America. I call it my second birth. It's like being here is like this is as you know to me at least. Uh, whatever I, I digress. So um, the, this these experiences that have added up in the last few years caused me to actually see not look at the world differently, but rather understand that not everybody looks at the world the same way that I do. So look. It's uh, we know that this industry, uh, most of the real estate licensees, right, or majority are female. That's very yet, dominated by women. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at leadership, uh, that's not the case. Mm-hmm. OK, so that that's on one hand. Uh, on on the other hand. Um, you, not I don't even know how to say it. It's like you have the the prejudice component going back i don't know 100 years 200 years 50 years doesn't matter that still oftentimes comes to play and uh what i realize is look i'm raising three girls okay they're you know before i blink they're going to be women in workforce and business etc And if the world that they're in is the world that I see, they have far fewer chances than I did Mm -hmm. as a young man. And then I started looking at studies. I started reading articles like it's, you know, statistically, it's 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 provable that the world is not even that the world is unfair towards minorities and the world is unfair towards you know, men uh, towards women. And the reason I'm like, not only applaud, but I'm like cheering and like everything that I can do to to help you be as successful as possible with this and have as many listeners is because I, I believe two things. One is that this conversation is way, way long overdue. Mm, okay. Thank you. And, and two, uh, so actually three things. Second is that more dudes, more guys like myself need to wake up no matter how great you are, not everybody is great as you are. Mm. Okay, and look at the world the same way. And third is you are paving the way in this conversation for your daughter and certainly for my three and God knows how many hundreds of thousands or million young women because change doesn't happen overnight. It may take a, more, decades more and decades more and decades more right for it to even out if you will but man i th- i think the world of these types of conversations because it's it, it they're they're significant for the future of our kids absolutely you know here's here's what i have found even even 20 years ago when i started and i told my dad i was going to get into real estate he was quite frankly and i love my dad he's a wonderful man he was so mad at me And he said, you know, Joanne, you went to college, you graduated summa cum laude from the University of Georgia with not one but two business degrees, and you're going to be just a real estate agent. And I will never forget him saying the words, just a real estate agent. 
because in his viewpoint, it's a side hustle. It's something for stay at home moms to do. Well, let's fast forward 20 years and it really has become a world and a career that, you know, it's not a side hustle anymore. It is a full blown business that you can run. Unfortunately, I think we still look at it as most men run a full blown real estate business. They run teams, they run brokers, but the women are running side hustles. And we're starting to see that slowly shift and change. I'm seeing more and more women take on big teams, more and more women, you know, really make it their full blown business. But, and I think sometimes we give ourselves our own glass ceilings and limitations, by the way, because we look at it as I'm doing this and raising babies at home, or I'm doing this as a side hustle to, you know, provide whatever. But I just can't wait to see where we'll be in 10 years from now and, and, I want to see that list of the top hundred influencers in real estate be more 50, 50. Yeah. It, 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 it's also going to bring, in my opinion, and this is where the difference kind of like in, in, um, in, in how, like I actually would, would, and would love to see more like the, the like what, women bring naturally to the conversation, right? Like there's there's physiological differences, of course, right? On on average, et cetera. But it's like, there is more right brain conversation that is so needed in, I think, in any industry. And it's like studies show that women just lead better through crisis. Like there is, there there's so like, I'm like, it's so, there's so much potential in people in general, and the more, unta- there is more untapped potential in women. Because even though that there's, there's always been like, people like you, I mean, if you think about it, and, and, and Joanne, like 20 years ago, you, a little bit over, right? Like mm-hmm. 20, 20 years Wait, ago, you're this. jumping from a, from a great consulting career into real estate was pioneering. Now you probably don't look at yourself that way. I look at it that way, but 20 <laughs> years ago, roughly, jumping from, what is it Accenture? Accenture Deloitte, Consulting, yeah. Right, which is like, I, I went to B school back, back probably around the same time that you were in Accenture, hoping to be at Accenture. <laughs> Right. Like I, I was sitting next to like probably half of my class was like either, you know, like Accenture or other uh, you know, management consultant type of breed. And it's uh, and you were leaving that. So that you can be in real estate. And I think that that shows a pattern that more and more smart people, accomplished professionals, business thinkers are jumping into this realist into into this industry it's one of the reasons i really love it is because it's like it's probably as close to meritocracy that you can get up until you start looking at kind of like the highest 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 levels right but up until that point it's like there's no ceiling and um and (laughs) and the more of that happens i think that the the better off we're going to get because then it's like these types of conversations are going to be more and more just in abundance. Yeah, more normal. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, I think, that. Yeah. I think that's a good way of saying it. It's like, it, <clears throat> it's just going to be normal. <laughs> Not new. <laughs> Not groundbreaking, but just everyday average yeah. coffee conversations, which is, you know, yeah. that's that's what needs to happen. So. Yeah. And it's, and man, like I, I've worked in the highest levels of leadership with both men and women. And it's just such a great balance because like each individual just brings so much more and you know there's a conversation about like women's touch it like there there is a different way of looking at things when you're a mom true or different way of looking at things if you felt like you were hit a ceiling or hit a glass ceiling right like, and it's, uh, the more we have those types of conversations, the better off all of us are. Like, I, I consider myself a better human because of these types of conversations over the last few years, because I, I strongly have woken up. And I, again, I know that my girls are not growing up in the world that I think existed. And kudos to you for, you know, making that realization and understanding now as a dad, too, 
you know, now you see like, how can I help my girls get to where they want to? Because now I'm starting to see things in a different light. I'm starting to see those paths that they're going to need to break down and take. Yeah, they're going to, I mean, like my path as a boy and a man is like, I'm clear is very different than that for a young girl becoming a young woman, becoming a woman. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, on one hand, I'm excited to, to kind of shepherd them through. On the other hand, I'm concerned and, you know, maybe even a little bit like anxious because it's, it is a, it, it is a different world that I think conversations like these and actions like these, because it's not just we're talking like this is going to be in the, in the ears or in the eyes of thousands of people is like the more this conversation is had, the higher the chances that more actions like these are going to be taken. Agreed. Hey, Vlad, we're going to wrap up our time here today. I just thank you for pouring into the podcast and into me personally and for being vulnerable and admitting some things and saying, you know, everything you did today. I think that I can't imagine that there's not at least a few of our listeners out there that are going to, you know, click the pause button on this, share it with a friend of theirs and say, yep, they, they're spot on. And this is where we need to go in the industry. Glad to be here, Joanne, anytime. And thank you for like everything you're doing in this arena and helping, helping women. It's not just you're helping women. You're help. I think that you're going to help men as well go through this type of a conversation. So thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for being on the show. Thank <laughs> you.